Hello everyone. Today I'm working on these lifelike uh, FA1s. And uh, if I look at the little tag here, 149, sounds about right for what they were uh, when they were new. Now I got really lucky with these. There just aren't a lot of these for sale uh, with the CP Rail uh, paint scheme. Either they didn't make that many or everyone that's got them, they want to keep them. I'm going to try to show you some of the detail on these. I'm really happy with the level of detail on these. If I can get my camera to focus in. There's little tags here, which uh, you can read under magnification and the builder's plates. The, light, the number boards light up. So... Uh, really good detail these are pretty good runners they um, they're a little noisy though oh yeah you can see the fan through the grill the HO scale version the fan actually spins so that's really cool to me although uh, it spins too fast you can't see it you have to run the train really slow to see it these have really great detail and they pull a lot of cars although uh, they're a little bit noisy so um, since it's not brand brand new I am uh, gonna clean it so I use the box method to remove these they're not too too hard to remove the box method I find is pretty easy just like any uh, covered wagon, you have to be mindful of these little um, ladders here. They have a fake, um, they have a fake knuckle coupler, which uh, looks good to me. I'm not changing that. The rapido in the back. Well, I've got uh, these two, and I got another one. And the other one also has uh, knuckle couplers. So I'll be running it the ABBA. So uh, the fake knuckle coupler is going to be on each end. So these is fairly straightforward. Nice little spit frame that's very heavy. This little circuit board, just wiggle it out. You have to take your time with this, but that's it. Very easy the fuel tank I use my little screwdriver you have to somehow get under it and it's not very hard uh, not very hard to remove and I'll do the same thing on the other side I'm putting my nail just to prevent it from clicking back So that's pretty easy and then you just have the two screws so not only is this a good runner it's also uh, very easy to work on I just need a little bit more torque on that I bought, just bought a very old uh, Snap-on 3 8 ratchet. And when I got it, it wasn't working. So I did the exact same thing to it and uh, I got it fixed 100%. So that's a good feeling. So take a note of the order, which these are from the factory. And actually we'll play a little bit with it, see if we can reduce the noise later. But I'm going to try and keep it the way it was from the factory. See how that sounds. And you can split open your frame. You still have insulators up here. So just be mindful of that. They won't move too much. And then I've got the other side with the two little flywheels. It seems to still have enough from the factory lubrication. I'm not changing nothing in here. I'm just going to give it uh, four little drops. Just to say that that was in here and I did something. 
I don't think it really needed it either. And then we'll take a look at our trucks. These two, they have enough detail uh, to make me happy. I'm really happy with the way these look. Although, you know, maybe if I could wish for something, I wish that these wheels, instead of being completely flat, they would have a little bit of a relief. You know, the real engine, the wheels aren't completely flat like this. But this looks like it's in really good shape. So naturally, I clean this with my rag. So these feel actually quite a bit oily. So a little bit of oil like that. It helps, you can see my rag is getting dirty. It helps for um, friction, but it can also hurt um, the electrical pickup. So it's good to keep all your wheels as squeaky clean. Now I'm taking an area of my rag that is completely new. Then we'll give this a good, uh, a good rubbing. There, you can see it, it was dirty in fact. So that's the secret to good operation is the clean wheels and also uh, your clean track. So I'm gonna run uh, my side frames and my shell with some, I'm gonna clean them with some, my toothbrush and some soap and uh, some water since I have everything apart. Yeah, I think they could use a good clean. There. Now I'm going to put everything back together. Now that everything's clean, so the uh, contact strips, they have two little pins where they land and that will keep them uh, between the side frames and the wheels they'll keep them aligned make sure your axles are in their little box where they should be i'm saying it's a box because back in the day it was um, a brass fiction bearing check it with your finger make sure that everything uh, rolls well and then uh, I'm going to do the other side off camera. I will put everything back together in the engine. Now I can start putting everything back together. So these, just like your U25B, have little engine cradles. So make sure that they are in their proper spot. Otherwise, they will make uh, just a too much noise. So now I can bring my other frame half back in. That's going pretty well. I'm going to tighten my screws. Actually, I'm not going to tighten them. I'm just going to start them. Maybe a couple of turns. That gives me enough slack where I can go and bring in my, uh, my trucks. And on the contact strips, the cleaning's not very complicated. I'm just going to rub my finger on it and that's enough. Because my frame is slack, very easy to bring in my trucks. And I'm checking to make sure my contact strips are at the correct position. If I don't have them uh, correctly positioned, my engine won't pick up electricity. And uh, I don't want that. So this one fell out just a tiny little bit. Definitely worth taking the time to uh, make it perfect. So that looks perfect. Checking both sides. See this one uh, completely fell out. So I'll be working on this uh, off camera. 
Now that I'm happy with the positioning of everything, I can bring my fuel tank back on. And that shouldn't be hard to put on, it should go very easily. And then I can tighten my, my two screws. So you don't want them too tight, just hand tight. Also gonna bring put my light on there and there's a tiny slit there where it goes once you know it's easy and then I'm gonna try it on the track see so yes, what I'm looking at for noise so let me just give it some power I think noise wise that's as good as it's gonna get. So that one, I'm gonna put the shell back on it. And just so you know, if you wanna convert these to DCC, that's what you have to do. You have to insulate the motor and you have to mill the frame to uh, put your decoder somewhere. So it's doable, but it's just a little bit of work. And then for the B unit, you go over the exact same process. This one too uh, looks brand new, but I'm still gonna clean the wheels. Now I can put the shells back on. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.